Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is capital punishment in Tennessee, and we're fortunate to have with us to talk about capital punishment in Tennessee, Attorney Larry Woods. Attorney Woods is a partner in the law firm of Woods and Woods, as well as a professor in the Department of Criminal Justice at Tennessee State University. And of course, Dr. Woods, let me uh, welcome you to the show this morning. Thank you, Dr. Haney. It's a pleasure to be here. And tell you how delighted we are to have you here uh, this morning to talk about uh, uh, what we consider to be a very, very timely and a very, very important topic, and that is capital punishment uh, in the state of Tennessee. And also to mention, Dr. Woods, that uh, we think that we're extremely fortunate because uh, we've got a teacher with us today, you see, and we know that you're a teacher because I think you won the uh, Teacher of the Year award at uh, Tennessee State University. And yes, that's sir. And, and, and of course, I also teach at Tennessee State University. So we've got a teacher here uh, with us to talk about Capital Punishment. I Punch appreciate that. that. <laughs> I'll try to just talk <laughs> rather than lecture, but. We'll appreciate that. Uh, you know, Dr. Woods, what we'd like to do, though, is to uh, talk about Capital Punishment. But before we get into that, let's talk about you, to have you to give us some information about your background, your education, and some of the things that were important in terms of your career and eventually leading you uh, into law and eventually leading you into this area of uh, the death penalty. And then we'll talk about some of the other topics today. Well, I tell everybody that I wound up in the legal profession as a lawyer because my mother was the best cross-examiner and still <laughs> is the best cross-examiner I've ever known. Uh, my mother raised mm -hmm. myself and two older brothers after my father died. Mm -hmm. We grew up here in Nashville and uh, my brother Frank, who's three and a half years older than I am, went to law school, and I think that was what motivated me more than anything to go to law school. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very active at an early age and uh, college age primarily uh, in the modern civil rights mm -hmm. movement. I participated uh, with thousands of others with mm -hmm. uh, Dr. King mm -hmm. uh, and the SCLC and the other organizations mm -hmm. in Georgia and Alabama as well as Chicago where mm -hmm. I went to law school mm -hmm. and an important part of that movement in the 1960s was the racism mm -hmm. that uh, was imbued throughout the mm -hmm. criminal justice mm -hmm. system at that time. Mm -hmm. So it got me interested yeah. in mm -hmm. how does the criminal justice process work, mm -hmm. how should it work, mm -hmm. and I think that's those factors are probably mm -hmm. what led me uh, mm -hmm. eventually to go to Northwestern University School Good. of Law in Chicago and mm -hmm. uh, after working for li the Legal Aid Society mm -hmm. at law school I started my own mm -hmm. law firm here in Nashville about 30 years ago and mm -hmm. I'm still at it hard every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Very good. You know uh, Dr. Woods one of the things that uh, uh, we know that you're known for not only uh, are you but one of the foremost uh, death penalty uh, advocates, I mean defendants in the uh, uh, state of Tennessee, but you're known nationally uh, for that. Uh, let's talk about uh, the death penalty from the point of view of having you to first of all talk about the death penalty itself, and uh, which is to say that you know what uh, our audience ought to know in reference to sure. this and the issues that are involved. Let's talk about it from that perspective, from your perspective. 38 states today authorize the death penalty for first degree murder. Mm -hmm. as does the federal government. Twelve states do not allow for a death penalty. Uh, they have life without parole or mm -hmm. something similar. Uh, Tennessee and, and the other 37 mm -hmm. states in federal government authorize capital punishment only for first degree murder mm -hmm. and they do it in a two-part trial. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone arrested and charged with the death penalty for murder First, they will receive a trial with a jury mm -hmm. as to whether they're guilty of the murder. Uh -huh. And if they are guilty of the murder, then there'll be a second phase or stage to the trial where the same jury, same jury. then hears mm -hmm. evidence, both from the prosecution mm -hmm. and the defense, as to whether the penalty should be the death penalty or mm -hmm. life without parole. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, each side gets an opportunity mm -hmm. to make an argument to the jury mm -hmm. as to what's most appropriate mm -hmm. or proper as punishment under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result, today across the United States there are uh, more than 3,000 defendants mm -hmm. on death row across the country mm -hmm. awaiting execution. Most of these cases take years and years mm -hmm. to finish the appeals mm -hmm. because of course it's the most uh, awesome mm -hmm. punishment yeah. we mm -hmm. can impose so the court system doesn't want to make any mistakes here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's irrevocable. Mm -hmm. We execute somebody who can't go back five mm -hmm. years later mm -hmm. like keeps happening in Illinois for mm -hmm. example. In Illinois 
some seven, I think, of their last ten scheduled executions mm -hmm. uh, have been put off because seven of those last ten men have been freed Free, from mm -hmm, prison. They were mm -hmm. mistakenly convicted. Mm -hmm. The system is very concerned that we not mm -hmm. wrongly execute someone. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not to ignore that uh, people who have committed murders mm -hmm. have committed a heinous, atrocious crime mm -hmm. and should be punished, obviously, for their crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of the irrevocability of the death penalty, mm -hmm we give that extra stage mm -hmm. to the proceeding to let the jury focus and make absolutely sure mm -hmm. that they're right about the punishment. Mm -hmm. You know, this has been a real issue uh, in American uh, history and in the criminal justice system. Why don't you give us sort of a little history of uh, what, you know, how uh, there were at one time, there was at one time uh, a, a prohibition against uh, the implementation of the penalty and give that kind of information. Thing, things changed on the death penalty, well, all through history, of course, mm -hmm. there have been ups and downs. And in the mm -hmm. late common law in England, mm -hmm. few people got executed because the church protected them. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this country, we've traditionally used the death penalty mm -hmm. up until the early 1960s. Starting the early 1960s, mm -hmm. primary, bu primarily because of the impetus of the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. Many courts, many government authorities backed away from the death penalty mm -hmm. because it had been used in such a racially discriminatory manner. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, many black defendants were executed, mm -hmm. uh, but white defendants were rarely charged with mm -hmm. death penalty offenses. And as a result, uh, in the early and mid-1960s, mm -hmm. most states stopped executing prisoners. Mm -hmm. And as you very accurately described it, there was a moratorium. Mm -hmm. Then in 1972, the U.S. Supreme Court, in a mm -hmm. case called Gray, I'm sorry, in a case called Furman versus Georgia, mm -hmm. the U.S. Supreme Court said the death penalty violates the federal constitution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Georgia then rewrote its death penalty Good. statute to say, we can write a death penalty statute that is constitutional, mm. and the Supreme Court agreed with them in 1976 mm. in a case called Gregg versus Georgia. Mm -hmm. So since 1976, we've now had death penalties again in some 38 states. Mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee passed its current death penalty law in 1978 or mm -hmm. to take effect in 1978. Mm. Uh, and the current death penalty law, mm. which the court said is all right, requires this two-stage proceeding mm -hmm. that I was describing earlier mm -hmm. and limits consideration of the death penalty so that not all murderers are eligible to be sentenced mm -hmm. to death, only those involved in what we call aggravating factors. Mm -hmm. Aggravating factors, for example, would be killing a police officer, mm -hmm. killing a prison guard, mm -hmm. uh, committing a murder for hire, a contract killer, mm -hmm. uh, committing a murder while in the commission of another felony of mm -hmm. violence, mm -hmm. committing a murder in a particularly heinous, atrocious, mm -hmm. with torture kind of way. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and uh, so there's general safeguards and attempt to at least provide some safeguards to make sure that not all cases simply because they are homicide should uh, face the death penalty. That's Is that what? That's uh, exactly right. Mm -hmm. We try with this new law, new since 1976, mm -hmm. to focus the attention of the mm -hmm. jury on the worst murders. Mm -hmm. The worst murderers should receive the death penalty. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those that do not commit the worst murders mm -hmm. should receive life in prison or life mm -hmm. without parole or some other lesser mm -hmm. penalty. And in that way, we limit the discretion mm -hmm. of the jury mm -hmm. so as to hopefully eliminate any discrimination mm -hmm. or prejudice by the jury. Mm -hmm. And the state of Tennessee uh, has uh, the two jury stage in terms of the administration of that uh, penalty. Now, when was the last time that we uh, used that, uh, the death penalty in the state of Tennessee? The last person to be actually executed under the death penalty law in Tennessee was in November 1960. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. been almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, a man from East Tennessee named Tynes who mm -hmm. had committed a rape and kidnapping. Mm -hmm. At that time, the death penalty applied to crimes other mm -hmm. than murder. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's been almost it's 40, 40 years, years and uh, will be 40 years almost exactly before we, we will have an execution mm -hmm, in this mm -hmm. state. Okay, well, i tell you what, uh, Dr. Woods, we've got about uh, 15 seconds before our commercial break today. And what we'll do, uh, we'll take this commercial break and we'll come back and we'll uh, give you an opportunity to talk about the uh, death penalty in the state of Tennessee. That is to give us uh, additional information about that. And we'll be back with you following this short commercial break. And we're talking about.